what's going on everybody out there in gardening land hope everybody is staying safe during this time of quarantine enjoying more time outside and in your garden it's been about a week since i've been able to get a video posted here so i wanted to take an opportunity today just kind of walk around show you how things are doing since some of our recent planting videos got some stuff that's looking great some stuff due to the recent storm is not looking so great but it's gonna be okay so we had a pretty bad little storm come through here earlier this week it was uh, late Sunday night early Monday morning and got pretty rough here winds were howling for quite a while we got about three inches of rain in a pretty short time span of only a couple hours there so some of the things in our garden took a pretty good beating some things withstood it pretty well and I'm not sure how far north this storm extended but i know it hit the southeastern united states pretty hard there was some tornadoes in some areas so hope everybody out there safe hope everybody's garden didn't suffer too much hopefully most of the things you planted will recover if you did experience this storm let me know how your gardens fared from it in the comments below and if this is your first time on our channel go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below and that bell button so you get notified every time we come out with a new video and if you're a frequent viewer of the channel it's always good to have you back so of all the things that were affected by this storm it probably did the biggest number on my squash plot so here's our squash and cucumber plot and i need to get in here and wheel hoe this air it out a little bit still just a hair too wet but it should dry out pretty soon you'll notice i've got a lot of different size plants in here and i made a mistake when i first planted these cucumbers and squash i planted some of them too deep and i had to replant and the replanting came up really well and it's kind of been a little bit of a saving grace because the smaller plants fared a lot bigger than the larger ones but you can see some of these cucumbers here are starting to try to climb that hordanova netting some of these right here you can see all that dirt on them where that storm just beat them down splashed all that soil up on top of them cucumbers i think are going to make it i haven't noticed any dying with the squash over here because they were a little bigger uh, took quite a beating i was just starting to put on fruits on some of these squash we can see a bloom right here on this one i think you see a bloom down there a little squash so just starting to put on fruits on some of these and man that wind just tore them up now they look a lot better today than they looked yesterday so maybe most of them will recover these little ones hopefully will start coming along and will at least have some viable squash plants in here but it looks pretty rough right now like this plant right here just completely lost the battle to that wind i don't know how fast the wind got going but it was it was pretty dang rough so we're just hopeful here we get some squash out of here it's not going to be the crop we kind of expected just because some of these plants died on us but we'll salvage what we can get out of here and we've got another plot or two we can plant some more squash in if we need to for succession planting purposes and kind of save ourselves hopefully okay that was a little depressing i know i'm sorry but i promise everything else in this video is pretty positive all my other stuff is looking pretty dang good and i want to show you that as well now here we have a dang good looking stand of this avalon sweet corn now the corn stalks may be a little hard to see there because of all that mud kind of still in there but this stuff right here is the fastest growing corn i have ever seen it germinated really really well and it's just growing so fast it's really enjoying that compost being in there i've already fertilized it a time or two with some 20 20 20 through the drip tape there and i'm just really really happy with the stand corn i've got i've came in here and thinned it out to about every six or eight inches or so i don't have hardly any skips in here and uh corn's looking nice and green and healthy I would imagine in a week or so it's going to be tall enough to heal it and uh one good thing about adding all this compost in here which you can see right down there that good stuff there 
and kind of tilling it in the soil incorporating well it has really improved my drainage around here last year in this dream garden we would have had standing water after just an inch or two of rain but after three inches of rain i didn't have any standing water in here and everything's just draining a lot better after tilling in you know about a ton of that compost per one of these thousand square foot plots so corn is looking good i'm kind of glad it wasn't any taller than it was because it probably could have gotten blown over but uh can't see really any damage with the corn i need to get in here and cultivate this and kind of air it out a little bit but corn looks very very hopeful so i told you it's not all bad news after the storm and we've got several other things that are looking just as good as that corn is and right here is what was our carrot plot in the fall and winter and has been transitioned into a bean plot slowly so we got almost all the carrots up we just got one more row here these are those scarlet nantes carrots they're nice good sized carrots we'll probably harvest those this week and so as we've been clearing out the carrots we've been planting more stuff here i planted a row here of these yellow or excuse me golden wax beans and they haven't came up yet and i hope the flood didn't just wash them all away we'll see in a few days if we have to replant that it's not a big deal we can do that with the cedar pretty quick but i got a double row of those waiting to come up this space here I'm going to plant some half runner beans in there, which I've never grown before, but I've been hearing really good things about. And over here are the beans you saw us plant several videos ago with our garden seeder. We've got a royal burgundy beans here. Now, some of these took a little bit of wind damage, but they're blooming. That wind didn't knock all the existing blooms off, but we got new blooms forming there. We should have some beans pretty soon. Here's our momentum beans which fared pretty well some of these down here you see got some wind damage there a little wilting on some of those top leaves but they should recover these things are pretty hardy so both rows of our momentum beans are looking pretty good for the most part and then we've got our pole beans here and they're starting to climb the trellis once they start climbing they will absolutely take off so they're a little slow to get going but once they start making them little runners like that right there they'll climb up to the top of this trellis start flowering and making beans and beans and more beans now let's talk about peppers so if you watched our latest episode of the row by row garden show i was telling you that my peppers i grew in the greenhouse just got kind of stunted i didn't give them the attention they needed and just didn't have a good pepper seedling grow out this year once i stepped them up to bigger pots so i had to go to a commercial nursery nearby and just buy some pepper plants in bulk uh wasn't too expensive doing it that way buying them you know by the flat and so i didn't get as much variety as i would normally like to plant because they only had so many things but we got some uh green bell pepper some purple bell pepper and some banana pepper and some hot banana pepper and some jalapeno so a good little variety and i may still try to grow out a few of our varieties in the greenhouse try again on that but i had to get some peppers in the ground because peppers are a pretty important part of our vegetable bag operation around here so had to get some of the ground just so i could get some pepper production growing and i can always try again with the seedlings here in the next few weeks so this is what we've got currently as far as peppers go we've got a whole plot of peppers and then Way over there on the other side of that beehive, we've got a few rows of the hotter stuff. This is all sweeter stuff here. Green bells, sweet bananas, and purple bells. And uh, all these fared pretty well during the storm. They've all started growing pretty well. I've uh, injected some fertilizer at least one time through these. Got them fed with some of that micro boost. And uh, these are all doing pretty well. And uh, once... They get a little bit bigger that's when we'll need to put our stakes in do our florida weave on them uh, but really happy with how these guys are growing so far good looking pepper transplants there they were a little bigger than what i normally put in the ground because uh, i got them from that nursery but i'm happy with them 
we should have lots and lots of good pepper production from this plot here hopefully now we talk a lot about succession planting on this channel and i was mentioning that earlier when talking about my squash plot and when you have these rogue storms that come through succession planting is really important because if you do have some larger plants that just get beat down and killed by some heavy rains or winds you've got some secondary production coming along so you don't have to just immediately go and replant stuff you've got kind of a backup plan there you've got more stuff that's coming along right behind it it may delay production a week or two or a month but you've still got more stuff that's going to be producing so you haven't lost everything so here's a good example of succession planting we've got those two rows of slicing cucumbers over there in that plot i showed you earlier that took kind of a beating and then here we've got some pickling cucumbers always good to have some pickling cucumbers and this is a variety called max pack and we planted these pretty thick along here we've already got our hoarder nova trellis up so they can grab hold of that trellis here in the next few weeks and um, so if for some reason those other cucumbers would have not made it we always got these here coming along it should do just fine so always good to have a backup plan always good to have some succession planning that way we can keep stuff in production for as long as possible and now our alliums our shallots our garlic our leeks and our onions now before i show you these i want to go ahead and preface this i did a terrible job at keeping the weeds under control in all these this year i got a little gung-ho i planted way too many alliums where i couldn't keep them weeded as good as i should so I'm not proud of my weed pressure here, but considering that, I think things are gonna be okay. I'll probably have to tarp this area next winter or cover crop it, do something to get that weed seed bank back down low where it should be, because it's pretty high right now with all the weed pressure I've got in here. So on the first four rows here, we've got our shallots, which I've already pulled some on the end of that row over there. And uh, I think they're about as big as they're gonna get. I probably need to go ahead and start pulling the rest of these and let them dry. Some of these are multiplying, you can see down there. Some of the varieties are multiplying. Some of them should not multiply. Like those right there. So really interesting how that has worked. Uh, these ambition shallots here, which I think are these first two rows, seem to wanna multiply more than these kind of longer semi-long or banana shallots and here we've got our elephant garlic which is doing pretty well like i showed like i told you earlier it's weedy in there i know but uh it's still growing good haven't had any scapes or any seed heads yet but it's still going still looking relatively green so we'll we'll just let that keep rocking until those plants start dying back a bit and we'll we'll get that uh dried and put on the storage rack right here is where i already pulled a row of green onions got it cleaned up put some eggplant in there this is just some black beauty eggplant i bought when i bought those peppers from the local nursery here we've got a row of leeks we've almost harvested the whole row there you can just see those leaves from where we kind of field dress those leeks and then here we've got our onions which like i showed you or like i told you are weedy as ever but we've been getting some good onions out of here right here we can see these are some white onions right here maybe some of the tops are starting to fall over so it's time to pull those let them dry in the sun a little bit we've got red onions here some of those super sweets um, I can't even remember what those onions are I planted so many over here some nicer looking onions I kept this a little cleaner then I did that over there, as you can see. And here we're getting some pretty dang good ones. These are some Texas Legends and some other sweet onions that I grew out from seed and transplanted uh, from plants that I grew. And so we get some, I, that one there is probably five inches in diameter. So these ones that we kept clean are actually looking pretty dang good. And we grew enough onions, we're gonna have plenty to go around so some of these I've been using as green onions, put them in our vegetable bag. Some of these like these, I'm just waiting uh, to the tops fall over just like that guy right there. So he's ready to pull. And we'll just lay them on the ground like that or lay them in the grass. 
let that vegetation dry out a little bit and put them on the storage rack and they'll be good to go. And then the last thing I was going to show you today were these tomato plants behind me, which I'm really happy about. They're doing pretty well so far. But I'm out of time for today's video. So make sure you stay tuned and catch that next video where I'm going to show you a neat little trick to do with your tomato plant. Something I've never done before, but something a customer of ours told us about. He's been doing it. it works well for him, so we're really excited to try it. Don't forget to subscribe and give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And if you did, check out these two videos right here. I think you'll really enjoy those as well. We'll see you next time.